Hi guys, welcome to today's vlog. In today's vlog, I want to do a small tutorial on how I actually make my videos pop in Lightroom and it's a very simple editing process that I'm going to show you and how you go from pre-flat images that you shoot and draw to images, travel photography images that actually pop and um, images that actually stand out. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use Adobe Lightroom and uh, Adobe's Lightroom is a brilliant software because it's got a, tons of features, but I'm just going, going to go through the basics on how to process your travel photography and how to make those videos actually stand out. So let's get straight into it. And um, I'm going to start by clicking on Lightroom right now and waiting for Lightroom to open. So in the first tutorial, to, tutorial. I'm going to sit for this session where the computer is right in front of me and I'm going to zoom that right now. So Lightroom is opening and um, we've got to wait. So I'm going to edit on Photoshop Light, uh, Lightroom CC, which is the Creative Cloud version of it. And um, so we click on library first and we click on all photographs. We click on file, we import the pictures that we want. So you click on import photos or videos and you go to the folder that you want to have. So you open it up. I've created a folder on my desktop. So I click on users, go to, that's my username, go to desktop. And I'm going to edit, edit a few travel pictures from my Ladakh holiday. So I want to edit all these pictures. So I'm going to click on import and uh, the videos get imported into my gallery. So if you can see right here, it's got import files at their current location. So it's importing them, importing all these files into the travel directory that I want to make of these photographs. So all the pictures that I wanted are imported right now. And if you can see, there's a light scanning here that it scans the pictures and re renumbers them. So the picture that I want to work on is let's just choose one at random and see which one works so this was a picture that i really liked at the trip so what i did with this picture is i had a soft a long exposure but um, so i wanted some texture so let's let's start with this picture so i opened the picture it's still in the library part of it so what you've got to do is click on develop because that's what you want to do you want to develop the picture and you want to develop the process of the picture. So it's pretty much similar to what we used to do in the olden days in when we used to have the editing process where we used to develop in a dark room. So here we develop in uh, Adobe, Adobe's Lightroom. So the first thing that you need to do is when your picture is clicked in RAW, you click on Lens Correction and click on Enable Profile Corrections. Now, the benefit of that is all your barrel distortion and the problems that you might have with your lens get corrected. Now, right now it's saying make none. So I remember I clicked this picture with my Tokina lens. So when I click on Tokina, it identifies which lens it is. Uh, Lightroom pretty much has an inventory of all lenses that it has. So I click this on 1116 with a 2.8 lens and um, it's pretty much corrected it. So if you can see, this is the original image. And when we enable profile corrections, that's what it, it does. So that's the first step. Apart from the next thing that we need to do is we need to check whether the horizons are straight. Now, in this picture, it was clicked perfectly well because I used um, the small little um, water, the water level thing. So in my picture, the cut, the horizons are set straight. However, if you want to set that, you can set a ruler. And if this is the horizon and you can see that you, you can pull straight across it and Lightroom will straighten out the horizon for you. If you hit enter, as long as you know that your ruler is straight. The next thing I want you to do is y you need to check whether this is the exact crop factor that you want. So click on crop and you can adjust it. I am going to stick with this for now because I like the way 
the picture was composed initially with a small rock at this corner here and um, the skies and the water flowing and the stream flowing so I absolutely loved uh, the composing so I'm not going to change that. Um, another thing that you need to move in, so you move into the basics panel here and you pull down the highlights completely, pull up the shadows completely. So what that does is it brings out the highlights and it pushes up everything that's in the shadow to as much as visible. Now what you need to do is you need to hold down the Alt and Option key on your keyboard. So I'm working on a Mac, so the controls are going to be a little different. So I hold down the Alt Option key and I click on the whites. So what I do with the whites and my editing process is I move it till I see a little white and then I pull back until the white just about disappears. So over here it, for the whites it is at about plus 58 and then I leave the controller. So that pretty much controls all the white sections of the picture. Now for blacks I like my pictures to look a little contrasty. So I bring it here and I bring it to minus 10. So that makes the picture kind of look a little, um, so I bring the blacks out a little more than the white so that I get that pop in the picture. Now if you want to ever compare the original picture, you hit the Y button and it shows you the original picture on your left and the edited picture on the right. Now that was the first process we're going to do. So I think that I could, um, it was shot late in the evening, so let me push the clarity of the picture a little up. So I think somewhere around 25 should be good. So I'm going to push it up to around 25 and I want the picture to be vibrant a little bit, just a little bit. So not too much. I'm going to push it up to 20. I'm going to leave the saturation as it is because I want to individually tone the colors. So that's pretty much on the basics panel what I'm going to do. I want to close that right now. On the tone curve, basically the tone curve, you can do a whole session on how the tone curve affects it. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to just adjust a slight S curve so that I get a get a good contrast into the picture. See if you actually move it up, it completely washes out the sky. So I'm gonna just leave it just about there and pull this down so that you get the blacks really pop. And that's about it. Um, the I'm gonna leave it at me medium contrast. It's gonna be a little too much, so I'm gonna leave it at linear because linear is the one that I just adjusted. The next thing I want to do is the sky needs to get a little blue into it. So the hue, saturation or luminance, I'm not going to touch the hue, but on the saturation side, I want the blues, the sky blues to come up a little bit. So if I move it completely up on the blues, it looks really fake. So what I want to do is just make the blues just pop just a little bit. And um, on the luminance side, I want to bring the blues darker. So let the blues just come down, but be careful that you're not, that you don't cause any color fringing by moving the colors too much. I want the greens to pop in the picture because there's a lot of green grass. So I'm going to push the greens up to around 81%, but then there's a lot of dark patches. So I'm going to move the green to uh, about plus 15 on the luminance side. See, for every picture, it completely changes it. it it's different, so you cannot really use these settings on any other picture, but you've got to play around with your settings and see what you like best. Um, apart from that, I'm going to push my orange up because I want the, the orange in the sky to pop out. And I'm going to bring the orange to get a little darker here. I want to push a little bit red so that you see the colors in the sky, but you've got to be careful that the picture does not start to green when it was clicked in low light. Um, I want a slight purple in the picture so that we can, because uh, it's an evening shot, so you want to create like an evening setting to the picture, but don't over push your colors because then it'll just look very fake and recolored. So you've got to keep your color toning as natural as possible. Um, so that's pretty much all I'm going to do on the hue, saturation and luminance panel. Um, another thing that I want to do and I always do is add this, a slight post crop uh, vignetting on the picture, but I'm not going to do that for this one right now. 
uh, I'm gonna go into this filter. So if you know in photography, you've got graduated filters, but just in case you wanna add one in post, you hold your mouse button down and pull down. So I'm gonna pull that there because that's pretty much where the sky is. And if you wanna pull straight down, you hold the shift button and pull. But if you leave the shift button, you can pull it to any angle. So I'm gonna leave it at that angle. And that's pretty much the angle that I want. But I want the skies to come out a little more, like I want them to pop. So I'm gonna bring the highlights down and I'm gonna bring the exposure of the sky just a little bit down, not too much so that it doesn't look bad. Um, I'm gonna bring my blacks down a little bit and I'm gonna push my clarity up just about a little bit over there. So I think that's that's pretty much what I want to do. Um, on the white balance side, the temperature, I want the temperature of the evening setting to, to, to look a little warm, but it shouldn't be too much. So I'm going to push it to about plus 11 and um, there was a lot of pink in the sky. So I'm going to push the pink up to about a plus seven. And um, that's pretty much what I'm going to do on that panel. Um, so if you want to check everything over here that we're doing is not destructive So you can check all the settings that we've done right now There's the history panel and it shows us that here we added the graduated filter and then we moved it and we adjusted it um, So that's pretty much what I wanted to do on this picture and show you how amazing you could make a picture look now What I want to do is the grass over here. I want it to really pop in the picture like it needs to stand out so I'm going to click on the brush panel here. I'm going to bring everything to zero. And or oh, a good way to see it is if you push the exposure completely up so that you know where you're painting. If so you've got to paint through this entire area, through, like that's what I want to do to the picture. Okay, so I want to paint around here and I want to make that grass pop in the picture. So... I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna paint over the grass right now. So that's, that's pretty much what I wanna do to that section of the grass. And uh, here there's a little more grass that I wanna paint over. So I'm gonna do that. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much the section that I wanted to paint. So what I'm going to do is now I bring the exposure back to zero by double clicking on the exposure bar and I push the clarity just about a little bit up. I push the sharpness a little higher and I want the exposure to go a little higher of the grass and bring the contrast down. So that's pretty much what I wanted to do to the grass section of it. Now that's pretty much it. So I click done. Now I want the rocks in all the pictures to pop so I click on the brush icon again and I paint only over the rocks that I want. So I want these rocks to really pop in the picture where I want them where I want the texture of all the the rocks to really show. So I paint over the rocks and um, I create that to really pop out in the picture. So what I want to do is increase the clarity of all the rocks and bring the exposure to zero. So if you've noticed, this is how the rocks were. And then I bring the rocks to pop out like really strong out of the picture. So, and then I, I hit done. So that's pretty much what I wanted to do to the rocks. Now the mountains look a little bit hazy. So what I could do is I could push the, take the brush again and just paint over the mountains a little bit here. Yeah. And that's pretty much the mountain line that I wanted to paint over. So what I'm gonna do right here is bring my exposure back down. And um, so I want the contrast to come up a little bit of the, of the mountains, but I think it looks a little too blue because I mean, it was snowy mountains, so I don't want it to look as much as it is, so that's fine. So I move that about a little bit and I want the clarity of the mountains to pop. Now, if you move it completely up, you're going to get this white. It's going to look fake. So you need to push it just about a little bit. 
that's pretty much how much I want to move it. And actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it just at about that much. And um, I want the blacks to come, like, I want the mountains to look about there. That's pretty much what I want to do to the mountains. And um, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. So looking at what we started off and what we did, that's the, the initial picture that we started off before and that's an after on the right. It completely transforms your picture. It is something that you need to look at. And it is beautiful what you can do with uh, Lightroom. And the last thing that I want to do is go to the highlight section and add a little post crop vignetting. Not too much, very little, very little, just about a minus 10. And um, so it brings the center focus into the center of the picture by darkening the edges. And that's it. that's pretty much my final product on the picture that I wanted to edit. And so I'm going to hit file, export, and go to the desktop where I want to leave the file at. And so you get an export file and the file gets edited and exported so you have the final um, export which will be on your desktop as soon as it's finished and that is pretty much the long and short of how you edit your travel photographs or just a couple of tips i hope it's helpful on how to edit your travel photography and pictures that are clicked in raw because i think it is uh, absolutely essential to get pictures that um, look beautiful and pop like the way they would because sometimes the camera does not capture that and i hope you enjoyed today's vlog if you've like if you like videos like this do hit me a message or hit it up in the comment section subscribe to my videos because i will give you tutorials on photography on editing basically daily living travel lifestyle food and i hope you like the content i post don't forget to hit a like button and subscribe to our channel I'll see you in the next vlog. Bye-bye.